You're watching PCTV Channel 17, proudly serving the Port Clinton City School District community. The following is a production of the Port Clinton High School Digital Media Class. Welcome to Time for Help. I'm your host, Rachel Fall, and we're very glad you've joined us. We hope you gain something from the program that helps you and your loved ones. We want to arm everyone with as much information as possible so we can all make good choices. And this is not to take the place of regular medical care, so be sure to include your health care provider in on your plans and your conversations. And today we're talking about pain. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an, a funny topic, but actually not funny at all. Thank you for being our guest, Dr. Naba Vagadi. Oh, thank you for having me. You're, uh, you're new to the show, so I, I appreciate your time, and I know you're busy. Um, but pain is really quite prevalent. Um, and I guess when we talk about pain, can you tell us, like, you deal more with chronic pain. So can you kind of differentiate between chronic pain and I raked too many leaves and now my arms are sore? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> when we talk about chronic pain, um, we're discussing pain that's become an actual disease unto itself. Typically okay. this happens at about three months, okay. somewhere around the okay. realm of three months. If you break your arm, for sure you're gonna have pain afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna treat the pain, but you just need to mask it until the actual Injuries, disease is, yeah, okay. injury is resolved. When you've had pain ongoing for you know, three months, six months, a year, you actually wanna treat the pain as a disease unto itself. Okay, so it's something that's lasted a long time and it's not necessarily going away too well. Exactly. Okay, so that's the chronic pain. Yep. What are some of the conditions that people come in with who have chronic pain to your office? Um, by and far the biggest one is back pain. And sure. this can be caused by you know, many things. You hear sciatica and pinched nerves. It can be caused by arthritis. It can be caused by muscular pain. Okay. Easily that's the, the uh, most prevalent one. Back pain? Back pain, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about other things? The other big ones, uh, the other big biggest one would be arthritis. Okay. You oh, know, yeah. with an aging population, we see more and more arthritis yeah. as time goes by. Is well, we'll get to arthritis in a little bit. So, um, just a number of things. Do you see people who have um, another like cancer or people who have broken a bone or something that have pain after? I, I don't see people in my clinic immediately after they've broken a bone because. Right. You know, they need to get they the need to heal first. bone fixed. Yeah. Um, there are chronic pain conditions after you've healed where the nerve doesn't heal properly okay. or there was some damage to it. Okay. And that can lead to a chronic pain syndrome. And certainly cancer pain is one of the kind of pains we okay. treat as well. Okay. What about shingles? I've heard shingles are really painful and I don't know that they're... It can be and um, there is a condition after shingles where you have ongoing pain even after it's resolved, oh, post, okay. called uh, post herpetic neuralgia. Okay. It's another one of the more common. Hmm. Okay. So lots of different things. It's not lots you see things. people just for arthritis or just for back pain. It's whatever is chronic pain. Any sort of chronic pain. Exactly. And I, we had you as a speaker at one of our lunches, and I liked what you said about chronic pain being something that affects your functioning. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about that. Sure. So that's our actual goal in the clinic. Um, anybody can just eliminate the pain. We have medications that sure. take away pain. But unfortunately, the side effect of them is that they turn you into a zombie <laughs> or put you right. to sleep. Right. Um, so our real goal is to return the functioning that you lost okay. because of the pain to your life. Okay. We want you to feel well enough to be able to do what do you want to be able to do. the stuff that you want to do. Yes. Okay. Can... Um, pain, all pain, be fixed, taken away, or is it just a matter of I need to build up my tolerance and manage this pain? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Um, some pains can be managed well by actually treating the underlying cause, and okay. those, in a way, can be fixed. Uh, a lot of pain can't truly be fixed, okay. and you can't really eliminate it, but really it's learning how to manage it and okay. finding different techniques to manage it. Do you think that people, when they think of chronic pain, they think, just give me a pill to make me feel better? Is that what they come in maybe expecting, or is that most of the time what ends up happening? Or? Um, it's certainly not what happens most of the time. Okay. 
uh, research has shown that if you use a multimodal approach that you end with better results okay. for the patients. So we try to go about it several ways. Um, but some people do come in thinking, oh, you know, maybe there'll be a pill that will take care of this. Yeah. Rarely there is. Okay. Not usually, unfortunately, again, with the, the pills that'll really eliminate it, the oftentimes side the aren't. side effects are that, you know, you end up being in bed all day sleeping. Gotcha. That's not good. That doesn't help your functioning. Not at all. <laughs> so what are, you said multimodal, so different things besides just medicine. So what are mm -hmm. some of the things maybe that people can do that are just kind of starting out or have mild pain or um, come into you? What are some of the things that you recommend besides medicine? Sure. Um, certainly right after an injury, you know, resting the injured area is reasonable. Okay. Um, immediately after an injury, icing it can also be helpful. Okay. Um, a little bit farther out, heat can actually help it as well. Okay. Certainly some of the over-the-counter medications can help, the Motrin and Tylenol, okay. um, Aleve medications. Uh, massage can help a lot of the muscular kinds of pains which okay. accompany injuries. Um, if you have something ongoing, it's worth seeing your primary care physician sure. to see if there's anything that they can prescribe you. Uh, biggest advice I give is to try to remain active once you're past the point of the acute injury. Okay. The worst thing you can do is to completely avoid using the area because it hurts uh, to some extent yeah. to use it because then the, it gets stiff and the pain gets worse over time. But that's a double-edged sword because after you break something, it's still tender and you don't want to use it, but you have to oh, absolutely. keep it, moving. And, and after you, if, you, if you were to break a bone, certainly for a period yeah. there, oh, yeah. you're going to want to yeah. mobilize it and really rest it. Right. But once that healing's done, you need to build the muscle back up and you need to okay. get it stretched again. If you don't, then you won't regain the function yeah. there. And is it the same with other kind, you know, pain from after shingles or um, after cancer treatment or during cancer treatment or, or arthritis? Is it the same thing? You kind of encourage people, you, you really do have to keep moving or else? It is, it is. Um, certainly after an injury, uh, the stiffness and dysfunction is more prevalent, but almost any kind of pain will be accompanied with some degree of muscle spasm, okay. um, because it's a natural response to pain. And if you don't, if you don't stretch these muscles and use these muscles, uh, while it may not make the primary pain worse, it'll compound the Long pain by adding term. another. Okay. And you mentioned talking to your primary care physician. How does all that work? You are, uh, you have a specialty of pain management. Do you work with family physicians and general practitioners? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, the typical way that uh, we like it to work is that you see your primary care physician and once they've addressed the um, primary concern, if they feel that you need to see a chronic pain specialist because your problem has uh, gone beyond their scope okay. or um, they will refer you to us. Uh, at that point, um, should we feel that you need to see, um, say, a neurologist or okay. um, a rheumatologist, I, I can give you that referral and I'll coordinate the care for your pain. The uh, whole time we're sending the, uh, the reports and communicating with your primary care physician so that they're still informed about right. your Right. I always mention that in the beginning of the show. It's sort of a disclaimer, but and I've said it a million times about you really do have to work through your primary care because they are primary, so they're kind of the hub of everything. Absolutely. So that's great that you guys can communicate Absolutely. back and forth and, and keep each other informed. Um, do you, you talked about massage. Are there other things, um, acupuncture or any sort of non-traditional medicine that, and I guess it may depend on what the issue is. But. Sure, well, it certainly does depend on the issue, but um, sure, some people have found acupuncture to be helpful reasonable massage therapy is certainly helpful yeah. for many muscular problems a lot of people swear by their chiropractor okay and yeah sure. there's evidence behind that uh, sure. showing that can be helpful um, physical therapy is one of the huge tools that I use for many many patients yeah. along with aqua therapy okay. and that can be very helpful as well and I would think people would say Massage sounds great. Physical therapy, you know, if you're in pain, again, it's one of those things where you don't want to move. Uh, but and it's one of those catch-22s yeah. that uh, it doesn't feel great while you're doing it. 
but a month or two out, if you've really applied yourself and done it, you feel much better. Much better in the long term. So is there kind of a progression when somebody comes um, to a pain physician, you know, we'll try these things and if that doesn't work, we get a little more intense and a little more invasive or anything like that? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. We start with uh, um, what I call conservative therapy, okay. which includes um, primarily physical therapy, um, some anti-inflammatory medications, okay. uh, maybe a muscle relaxant, okay. um, some weak pain relievers. Uh, and at the same time that we're doing this, if we have suspicion that there may be um, a pinched nerve um, that we don't have a definitive test for, we might be ordering those tests as well okay. to further prove it. Once, uh, once a patient's done these things, if they haven't shown sufficient uh, improvement, okay. then we'll talk about a more invasive therapy where we talk about doing the injections and the shots. And okay. Is that like cortisone injections or are there other things that you... Well, it's similar, similar. Okay. Um, most of the injections we use a, a corticosteroid okay. like cortisone. Um, and uh, in some of them we also use some local anesthetics like what a dentist would use to uh, okay. numb your gums. Okay. So that's a little more intense in terms of getting right to the, the joint or whatever is hurting and stick, yeah. injecting something that Absolutely. magically makes it feel Absolutely. a little better. Absolutely. And that, um, I also heard you say, that has varying results for people. Sometimes it's short term, sometimes it's many months. And it really depends on which injection we're doing. Okay. Uh, e even in the same location, um, for instance, the lower back, an epidural may last three to six months, uh, whereas a uh, uh, medial branch block, a, it's a diagnostic block for okay. back arthritis, will only last six to eight hours. It's oh, used for okay. a diagnosis, okay. and we'd have to go on to another therapy okay. afterwards. So that's why we don't have to know all this. You that's have to know why you that. come to a pain, and they exactly. be a specialist, and they will kind of help walk you through the process exactly. depending on what your pain is. Okay, awesome. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. talking about pain, chronic pain, kind of long-term pain that's impacting a person's functional life. Yep. And um, we talked about kind of overall some of the things working with your primary care physician um, and how you can coordinate that with other, other specialists if it's a neurologist or whatever, um, and some of the different modalities that you can do for people. One of the things you mentioned in the beginning, and um, seems to be an issue in my family, so we're going to talk about it, <laughs> is arthritis. Sure. And you said that's probably back pain and arthritis are one of the two, two of the biggest um, Absolutely. conditions that people come in with. So talk about arthritis. Absolutely. What is, you know, old Arthur, I hear people talking. Sure. So uh, arthritis is, uh, really means inflammation of the joints. Okay. And there can be different reasons for it. The two big ones um, that we see or osteoarthritis. That's okay. wear and tear. That's the one that comes as you get older. Gotcha. Um, you do a lot of lifting. You get back gotcha. pain. Um, play tennis a lot. You do a gotcha. repetitive motion. You get elbow pain. Okay. That's the osteoarthritis. Okay. Uh, the other one would be rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Now this typically occurs in a younger person. That's an autoimmune disease. Oh, okay. So for that you'd want to... Uh, you know. So they sound similar but they're pretty... They're, they're different. Different birds. They're different. They, um, they can cause some of the similar symptoms, okay. but really the biggest differentiator is that uh, for rheumatoid arthritis, you don't have a real good reason the person should have this. Gotcha. They're typically younger, gotcha. um, and you can see some other symptoms that go along with it, okay. some more prevalent swelling and such. Uh, it's one of the good reasons to uh, see your primary uh, physician first, okay. because Rule out. they should be able to tell typically whether it's okay. rheumatoid arthritis or osteo. Okay. If it's rheumatoid arthritis, they want to send you to a rheumatologist. Okay. You talked about it, it's an inflammation in joints. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's joints from your finger, mm -hmm. in your back, I mean, any joint? Can you Al get arthritis in almost your- Almost any joint you can, you can neck, get Neck, your knee, your ankle, yes. everywhere, your toes. I think I may have seen it all <laughs> at this point. Um, 
Yeah, when you when you repeatedly use the joint, uh-huh. first you inflame the cartilage, then you wear away at the cartilage. Gotcha. Then you start wearing away at the bone. Then they don't each like that. Of, exactly. <laughs> each of these stages causes worse inflammation. Okay. Causes worse damage, which results in pain. Is there a genetic factor to it? I know it's from wear and tear, but are you predisposed to it and then? Yeah, there is a familial factor. Okay. So you know, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> if you know your mother and father have had yeah. <laughs> bad arthritis. Uh, we'll stay in contact, it's good. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there is a little bit of a genetic factor to it. And I mean, it seems there there is no cure for arthritis. There is no cure for arthritis. So that's definitely something that just needs to be managed. So talk exactly. about how you might help somebody manage arthritis pain. Sure, it's um, so much of what we do for um, any uh, chronic pain. But with arthritis, there's a big emphasis on uh, staying active. Because and that's probably one where you don't want to. That's one hurts. where you <laughs> definitely don't want to because it hurts horribly. But an arthritic joint can easily become a stiff joint and you can actually lose function permanently. Completely. And you really don't want that to happen because that's really going to impact the functioning of your life. Yep. So my biggest goal, as we spoke about before, was to return you to function. So I try to manage your pain, but at the same time encourage you to do the steps necessary to regain that function. Okay. And over time, the hope is that we can do both. Okay. Your overall pain level is decreased, but also you're functioning better than you were. Is increased. And that involves maybe... I'm assuming therapy. Uh, Certainly therapy for that. Maybe massage and and that kind of thing. Massage, those sorts of things. Um, We uh, almost certainly, I use some medications for this, depending on where the arthritis is. Okay. Uh, And oftentimes, because as we discussed, arthritis is not a curable disease. Right. Oftentimes this does lead to injections. Okay. So you can kind of start out with your Motrin. Absolutely. And after a while, that might not work. Uh, absolutely. And at, at the point that um, taking over-the-counter Motrin is working for you, your primary care physician won't send you to me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but that would, you know, staying active, doing a um, uh, workout routine, taking some, uh, some over-the-counter medications would be a good first step. Gotcha. Once, that has it, once that's stopped working for you, um, your primary care physician will send you to me. Uh, at that point, I'll give you some more prescription uh, medications to work uh, and some uh, instructed therapy, gotcha. physical therapy, aqua therapy. And when that stops working, we talk about doing a possible injection. Okay. Aqua therapy. I kind of forget about that, yeah. but we, we, yeah, nice warm pool. Oh, exercise. it's great. It's great. <laughs> it loosens up the muscles, especially someone, you know, with bad arthritic pain on a day like today where it's oh. <laughs> quite brisk outside. Quite brisk. It, anyone with bad arthritis sure. knows that when the weather's like this, it really flares Hurts. up. It really helps them to uh, get into a warm pool. It loosens those muscles, increases gotcha. blood flow, and it makes them feel better by itself, but also allows them to actually do the movements that are going to help them longer term. Long term, yeah, because you probably don't feel like exercising on a on a cold, cold morning. Wow, who does, right? Right, right. <laughs> so um, you can kind of work through the process, working with your primary care physician, going to see a specialist, all that kind of stuff. Um, wear and tear, does it, I mean, is does that happen to everybody or I heard um, Dr. Kresge somebody asked him once about running and he said if your body is perfectly aligned every joint every bone everything you can run till you're 100 but not many of us are perfectly that's, aligned <laughs> and that's so the eventually key eventually we're all going to that's the key Dr. Kresge's very right there <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the catch is who's going to who's right. perfectly aligned and when running, um, who's going to keep that perfect, perfect form, form every time? Right, every step. Um, it typically, uh, when people say, oh, should I not do this because it hurts? Am I going to hurt myself worse if I do these activities? I tell them, look, yeah, you probably will make it worse. But you're, you know, your primary goal in life is not to make things worse, but to right. live your life, right. enjoy your life. Right. So I always encourage people to do, you know, <laughs> whatever they whatever want to do. Whatever doesn't make you Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and we'll, we'll treat the arthritis as it comes. Gotcha. All right. So probably everybody's going to be kind of prone to it. Uh, most people get to some degree or another. Now, most people don't need to see me, but if it does get bad enough. You're there. I'm here. 
one of the things you also talked about in your presentation was uh, how to convey pain to your physician. Because mm -hmm. going in and saying, I hurt. Well, hurt means a lot of things. Talk about all the different facets I, of Absolutely. That. So the, the things that are really helpful for us and for the primary care physicians to hear when you come in um, are uh, what type of pain is it? Uh, sharp pain, burning pain, dull pain, and it's hard when you're put on the spot in the physician's office, especially, unfortunately sometimes pain is like um, the rattle in your car when you go to the mechanic, yeah, it's, it's no longer there. there. <laughs> so it's great to figure out these things ahead of time. Right. Yeah. Um, know what the character of the pain is. Okay. Um, we certainly want to know what the intensity of the pain is. Okay. You know, is it a uh, dull ache? or is it excruciating, bringing right. you to tears? Um, we want to know where it is. Okay. Not only where it is, if it's traveling. Oh, okay. There's a big difference between pain in my lower back and pain that starts in my lower back and travels down my leg. Gotcha. Treated differently, different okay. causes. Uh, we want to know what time of day it's worst. Huh. Okay. It tells me something very different if you tell me your pain is really bad in the morning and at night. Uh, or if you say, you know, my pain is really bad at um, 4 p.m. every day and it's mm. eased up at night, it's fine in the morning. Okay. Um, we want to know what you've done in the past that's helped it. Okay. And what you've done in the past that's hurt it. That's made it worse. Okay. And writing these things down ahead of time for us um, and bringing it in will go a long way to helping you get mm. the pain under control. Do you encourage people even maybe to keep almost a journal? Because like you said, inevitably, when somebody will come to your office, they'll be having a fantastic day and they don't have any pain. So maybe just writing down like, you know, today was a seven in my back. Well, I definitely do that once we um, start treating them. Okay. Before any, before any therapy is initiated at all. That'd be know. ideal. But yeah, exactly. But Just keeping track of it. Keeping track. You know, if you tell me typically it's like this. Okay. That's very helpful. Okay. That's very helpful. And you talked about um, rating their pain on a scale, and instantly mm -hmm. I think of people who have a real high pain tolerance, and people. So that scale, but you also talked about it's all about function. So yeah. So if it's the, a seven for me, and it would be a two for somebody else, it doesn't matter. It's a seven for the, me. This scale is something that you, we're going to ask you every time you come in, but in reality, it's of limited usefulness. Um, it helps me when you come into me and say, look, my pain's a five now, if I saw you three weeks ago and you told me, hey, my pain's a 10, gotcha. well, that That's tells me sign. that we're, we're helping right. you. Or vice versa, if you come into me and say it's a four, you know, we do some therapy and you come back in and say, well, you know, it's still a four, mm -hmm. well, that tells me we may not be getting there as well. Gotcha. But in reality, um, what I ask all my patients is, oh, you know, how is this, you know, how's, basically how's your function going? I may ask it in different ways. Gotcha. You know, a gentleman may come in and say he wants to go fishing with his grandson. I see him a month later, I may say, hey, you know, how's the fishing been? Yeah, gotcha. That kind of tells you more than a number necessarily. It tells me a lot more than a number. Okay, because it's all about function. Exactly, exactly. What a, what a realistic way to look at it, because numbers are great, but if yeah. I can't do the things I want to do. I, that's why I tell a lot of my patients, I say, you know, it, it's great if you tell me your pain's a one out of 10, but if your pain's a one out of 10 because you can only sit on the couch and can't do anything, what have we really accomplished? Right. If you tell me your pain's a four out of 10, but you know, you're out golfing and mm -hmm. cooking and traveling and doing the things you really want to do, I'd be much happier with that, that yeah. even with it being higher on the scale than right. that one out of 10 on the couch. Gotcha. Any last minute thoughts on pain management? Things you wish people would know or would ask or? Well, certainly for people, um, first time they see me, I, I hear the, the similar <laughs> sentiment often which is, oh, you know, I thought you were just going to put needles in me the moment that I came in, mm -hmm. or um, I guess in the exact opposite end of the spectrum, oh, I thought you were just going to give me a bunch of drugs and turn oh. me into a zombie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a lot. And there's a bad rap, kind of. And, and there is, and, and some, of it, some of it is deserved. Right. You know, you see on the news every day right. that these things are happening. Um, but by and large, the majority of the pain management physicians, we're looking to help you increase your function. Right. And certainly if you see someone and they are just <laughs> doing medications yeah. or only injections you may want to see someone else but i wouldn't be afraid to go to the uh, the okay. pain physician thinking that this is uh, assuredly what's going to happen right you don't know because there's a lot of like you said a lot of modalities Absolutely. that you can help with awesome Absolutely. all right
Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. We're going to take another break, and we'll be right back. We finished talking about pain. I want to thank Dr. Nabil Gadi for being our guest today, talking about um, an issue that affects a lot of people to varying degrees for various reasons. Um, this kind of helped clear up a few things and uh, gave us some good ideas. So um, I'm sure this is an issue probably for most people out there. Or I'm sure everybody knows somebody who's dealing with pain. So if you have questions, you can reach their office by calling 419-732-3972. And um, their pain management office is located behind the hospital. So um, if you ever have feedback about a program or if you have a suggestion for a future episode, please let us know by sending a note to Time for Health, 615 Fulton Street, Port Clinton, Ohio, 43452. Or you can email Carla Pels at the high school. So think about something that you learned today, whether it's useful for you or somebody that you know, be sure to share with them. And until we meet again, I encourage you to make Time for Health.